Hi everyone, today I'm doing a video all about how to achieve the perfect French manicure. So in this video I know that some people do struggle to try and get that perfect line. So I'm going to show you four different methods of how to achieve that look. I'm also going to talk a little bit about hints and tips that I've found out along the way which might actually help you. Now the truth is, and I know that this is such a cliche thing to say, but really it is all down to practice because when I first started out I definitely could not do this so it is something that you just need to practice with at the end of the day you can always just take it off and start again so that being said I'm getting into the video now and I hope you enjoy it so to start off with the basics, a French polish, which is also commonly known as a French manicure, is where you just have the white polish and it's just applied over the free edge only of the nail. When I say free edge, what I mean of course is that that is the part of the nail that is not attached to the nail bed. So it's just applied smoothly across there. You then apply a sheer, kind of slightly um, opaque colour, which is normally a pink, over the white and that kind of mutes down that white colour to more of a natural tone so that's how you do it now there are four different ways that I can think of um, one is kind of the traditional way and then there's other ways if your hands aren't that steady which I will show you in this video but that is the general gist and kind of idea of the look now the thing that I get asked all the time is are my nails too short for a French polish the truth is I mean of course there's no nail that is too short so to speak but ideally what's more kind of natural looking is that if you do have a certain amount of free edge to work with obviously if your nails are kind of cut off there then it is going to look quite unnatural if you then do a white line there as obviously it's too short and making the nail look a lot shorter so that's the only thing you need to bear in mind another thing is to make it look more of a professional finish you want to ideally get the whites of each tip on the same uh, width on each nail which just because you don't want kind of a small thin lines here, a thick one there, a thinner one. So you want to make sure that your nails are filed so that they are all the same length as well. So that being said, I'll show you the different options that you have got available to you to create this look. The first method that I'm going to show you is the traditional freehand method. Now the two polishes that I generally use on clients is either OPI Alpine Snow, which is a very strong um, kind of a radiant white colour. The other one which I kind of prefer is the Jessica polish and that colour is called white cap. Now that's a slightly off white, it has got ever so slightly bits of shimmer to it but not very much but I prefer that as that's more of a, a more natural kind of French colour. Okay so I'm going to show you the method now. I've got the white which is the Alpine Snow by OPI and I'm going to wipe off just the right amount of polish. Now this will take some practice but the reason why you just want to get off just the right amount so there's just enough to cover the nail on left on the brush is because it gives you a better smile line. So the smile line is this area here so if you get a better smile line and it just means it gives an overall smoother appearance if you do stop halfway it is terribly difficult to then continue on and kind of complete that smile so I'm going to show you it now so I've got just the right amount of polish I'm going to start there and then just sweep across the nail and there it is there So once the white's dried, you're then going to take the pink colour and then just paint over it with the brush, just gently. You don't want to be pressing too far down or it will potentially uh, ruin the white underneath. Another way to achieve the look is to take the polish and as you can see by this OPI one it's completely flat at the top and what you can do is you can stroke down the nail and into the smile line shape with this action. The only thing is I do find that it's not quite as smooth but if it works for you then you know it's good as good as any other method. 
Another tip to bear in mind is that if you do put on too much polish on the end of the nails then it will chip off a lot easier so it is best to keep it as thin a line as possible. Method two would be to use these French manicure stickers so they're just on big sheets like this you just peel one off and put it above the smile line so it just kind of cordons off that area so you can just paint the tip only and what you do then is just peel it away and leave the white to dry so it is a good method as well if you do struggle with the first traditional method Method three would be to use a Conad stamping system. Now this plate here is M19 and as you can see it's got different size smile lines there. So you just apply the white to the smile line, scrape and stamp directly onto your nail. So this again is a good method for maybe somebody that can't achieve it with the traditional method or hasn't got maybe a steady hand. So it is a good way to go if you can't do any of the others. The last way that I've heard of, although I've never done this myself, would be to take the white polish and paint maybe a third or a half of the nail with all in white and then what you do then is just to take a cotton board or q-tip, whichever way you want to call it, and you just dip it into nail polish remover and then use it there to swipe and kind of make that C curve into the smile line. So you just get rid of all of the other polish that you've painted over that area and just smooth it out that way. Now that method I think works again for some people, it might work for you, but it isn't necessarily the best because you could easily get little bits of cotton wool stuck into the nail, which isn't really a good look. But that is another way if you do find it's easier that way. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and maybe you've found some of it useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see more videos from me. But thanks very much.